sometimes in today's world you need a cigar that can double as a weapon. Holy crap. If this thing hit you in the head, Fingers Malloy, you would be rendered somewhat unconscious. It would end uh, with an X-ray. This thing is built like a tank, which is weird because it's so underrated. Oh, that's actually the name of the cigar. It's Eat, Drink, Smoke. I'm Tony Katz. And that right there is America's favorite amateur drinker, Fingers Malloy. Also this- underrated. Oh, no, you're not. You are finely rated. Indeed, like a wine or perhaps a smelly cheese. Luciano cigars make some really wonderful stuff that we have enjoyed for years, specifically the Dreamer. The Dreamer in the Lancero Vitola is an excellent smoke that should be in your humidor at all times. They do the Fiat Lux. They do the Mil Diaz. This is the underrated. It's just got released from Luciano cigars. It's a weird mix, baby, because this right here is is a, a Mexican San Andreas wrapper. And you've heard us talk about the Mexican San Andreas. And and it, it's almost become a bit gimmicky because it's got this sweetness, it has this darkness, and, 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 and you're seeing it everywhere. What's fascinating is that the binder is Nicaraguan, but the filler is Connecticut Broadleaf and something referred to as Ecuadorian HVA, which is like an Ecuadorian Habano. The Ecuadorian Habano, the Connecticut Broadleaf, these are wrappers. These aren't usually used as fillers. This is a weird way to do a, a, a cigar. And we're smoking it. It comes in four different Vitolas. We're doing the Sublime. It's a six and a half by 54, which means it's six and a half inches long. See. Always makes fingers Malloy laugh. And the ring gauge is a 54. That's the diameter of the cigar or how thick it is around. See. Again, with the laughter, a 64 ring gauge would be a full one inch around. So this is right at the top for fingers and I, we both uh, uh, agree with this of where we like to be for mouthfeel, which sounds funny. It'll make you go. Yeah. uh, But it's true. How a cigar feels in the hand, how a cigar feels in the mouth. That is a very big part of whether or not you're going to like the cigar or not. But this wrapper is oily that you, you can feel the leaf. It, it, the grit is like four grit. It's like bumps everywhere. But it's literally it it it's black, and it's shiny in spots. Yeah, it's crazy good looking. It is gorgeous, and you already touched on it at the beginning. I mean, it feels like you've got a billy club in your hand, right? I mean, it is hefty. Uh, some would say beefy, and that some uh being me, a beefy cigar. Uh, that wrapper is beautiful, dark chocolate. Uh, and you know we just lit this. But right away, you're getting uh, some of that sweetness that you would expect from uh, a Mexican San Andreas wrapper. Also, for me, cocoa, uh, a little bit of uh, nuttiness, but also pepper. Oh, Uh, yeah, that's a little that is a little creamier than I thought it would be right off the first. We just lit this up, did a straight cut on the cap, right? You're smoking from the cap end, a straight cut, which means right across. And if you check our videos over at EatDrinkSmokeShow.com, but we talk about what we mean by a shallow uh, a cut uh, there uh, and and you you then toast the foot that's the end you light from lit it up but that that first a little creamier than I thought it would be that the Mexican San Andreas mixed with Connecticut Broadleaf that should be sweet and, and, a, and a punch right this is going to be a medium full cigar and I love a Connecticut Broadleaf daddy loves Connecticut Broadleaf in this conversation fingers boy mm-hmm I am daddy. Uh, a, a very nice uh, one-two punch there in, in, in terms of flavors that, that I like, but it, it's, it's, it, it is actually heavy in the hands. Yeah. It's super weird because you don't, you, we've talked about wiffle ball bats, right? So that's a cigar that we don't think is, is heavy enough. It just, it feels too light. We've talked about cigars being beefy. This has a club-like feel. Yeah. Right? It, it, it's kind of tremendous. I will admit, When we say oily, very rarely do I come across this. This is a little slippery in the hand. Really? Oh, absolutely. Positively, it is. You need a little resin? Uh, I I don't don't know. Maybe maybe a smoking glove. (laughs) Something. uh, You got any stick them? Stick them. You know, that takes me back. Whatever it is receivers used to use uh, for the Cowboys in the 1980s. Yeah, Stick them. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. But uh, the smoke coming off this thing is crazy. Yeah, and, you know, when you you talk about that blend, to me, I'm glad I had something to eat 
before we started smoking this because I don't know if I'd want to smoke this on an empty stomach. Did it come out of a vending machine? No, it came out of a drive through window, though. We'll play later. Oh, uh, it's it's a train wreck. Uh, what? Oh, is it really? Oh, it's bad. Later, we will play What Did Fingers Eat Today? This uh, is the underrated, that's what it's called, from Luciano uh, Cigars. You want to grab your notebooks at this time, right? Especially with the weather change. Spring is is is, is here. What did you eat today? What did you drink today that all has, uh, changes your palate, changes the amount of saliva. It'll change how you engage the cigar, the weather. Right now, we have got glorious weather in Indianapolis, Indiana, that will all change and it'll snow next week. But for right now, for right now, spring is here. The sun is shining. Birds are singing. Fingers Malloy. It's true, but let's face facts. If it does snow next week, what do we care? We're going to be in Las Vegas. That is true. We will be in Las Vegas at the end of, of next week. It's nice to know some people are excited. How much are you bringing to gamble? How much am I bringing to gamble? To gamble. What is your gambling allotment? I don't know if I feel very comfortable talking about this. Is it this. three figures? Oh, let's not get crazy. Is it four figures? Let's not get crazy. Four it's five, five figures, isn't it? No, it's not five figures. Are you talking about the entire trip or a day? Ooh, uh, uh, entire trip. It may be four figures. When you say it may be four figures, it's four figures. It's five figures. <laughs> Just tell the people, when it comes to video poker, you will not be deterred. I don't really need to bring that much money because for me, Tony, the video poker machine at a Vegas casino is like an ATM. Is that what it is? That's exactly what it is. I pretty much guaranteed that I'm going to lose my shirt now that I said that. Uh, at, at 3 a.m., where will I find you? Uh, I hope by then I will at least gotten into the hallway of the hotel I'm staying at. I'll Not see you at the video poker machine. Passed out on the side of the door. That, that won't happen. The Luciano underrated is what we are, are, are smoking. And, you know, we talked about being a little creamier than we thought right off the bat. Um, I think I think you're hitting something kind of unique on the cocoa there. Right. The, the idea that that it is a, a, a touch chocolatey. There is a, a, a sweetness going on. What is interesting is that it's not overly bold. It's not overly punching by any stretch. There is a little bit of spice dancing mid tongue. That's that is about it. It is it is a. It is a cocoa creamy, mm -hmm. little bit of spice. That's where I'm at. I got to tell like you. Mexican hot chocolate. Exactly. I got to tell you, I was expecting this to punch me in the face right away. The and look of it, right? Yes. Everything about it. Everything about the description, the, how it looks. I thought, okay, this is going to hit me in the face. And so far it has not. But, you know, we just lit this. So we'll see how it goes moving forward. Oh, and then we got to get into price, which you will not believe. Because that's always the question. We take a look at that and we say, at that price point, is it in your humidor? We will get to that in just a little bit. Find everything we do at EatDrinkSmokeShow.com and on Instagram, Eat, Drink, Smoke Podcast, the underrated from Luciano Cigars. That's what we're smoking. As Fingers Malloy mentioned, we are going to Las Vegas. <laughs> it is the Premium Cigar Association trade show. We're going. We're going to check out all the new product. All the video will be there at EatDrinkSmokeShow.com. It is Eat, Drink, Smoke. That's the name of the show. That's what you're listening to on this fantastic radio station, or perhaps you're listening to the podcast. I'm Tony Katz. That is Fingers Malloy. Find everything, EatDrinkSmokeShow.com. So we're going to Vegas, and Fingers Malloy loves Las Vegas. Can we just move the show there? Is it possible? No. Oh, drat. I'm not. My parents lived in Vegas once. Yeah? Yeah. No. Is that how we got Tony Katz? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I, we did not get Tony Katz from a, a tawdry night of big winnings in Vegas. At the El Cortez? Yeah. We, we, we got Tony Katz from a tawdry night of peach schnapps in Brooklyn. That's... That is clearly how it how it went to classic an, love story. There was an amaretto sour and perhaps a wink. I'm not <laughs> sure. Uh, that's how I always assumed it, 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 it went down. But it was a very nice Oldsmobile. And I think that's what what Matt. Um, this is how I speak about my mother. I am going uh, to help. But this means we got to get on a plane. Fingers, Malloy. Ugh. 
we got to get on a plane and we got to fly. Um, we're, we're, we're taking the Spirit Airlines. Yeah. But I did get the big seat. That's because wonderful. I tried to get first class for us because I fly the way I fly, kitten. Yeah. I fly the way I fly. Um, the, the prices, $92 billion. It's true. Uh, I flew last week. For the first time in two decades, I got the TSA uh, extra treatment. No. Yeah. What happened? I walked through the machine and I stepped out. You know how they do the, the courtesy wave? They bring right. you forward. Yeah. And then the gentleman said to me, uh, you have a red dot on your groin. <laughs> oh, wait, you're I, serious? Yes, I'm serious. Oh, God, I thought that was just your opening line on Tinder. No, well, you know, now you're really getting into stuff that we could talk about uh, extra on the podcast. But for this, we're talking about the TSA. And uh, he said, look, on the monitor, you have a red dot on your groin. And I thought to myself, what do I win? I I won, I won air quotes a uh, full pat down in that area, and the best part about this, Tony, of course there is no best part, uh, but the part that really uh, I don't even want to say amused me because there's nothing amusing about this. He said, "Don't worry, I'll use the back of my hand," as if that matters at all, as if that makes you feel less violated. And boy, let me tell you, guy was pretty good at the exam. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Did you get his number? Uh, no, but he, he went places I didn't think uh, he would ever go. We're actually going to buy ourselves a little retirement home in the Miami oh, area. You. someday. Yeah. Uh, but uh, holy cow, ridiculously invasive. Uh, he, he says to me, do you want to do this out here or do we need to go into this private area over here? And I thought to myself, what what is this? Uh, go ahead. Uh, let's just do it here. And so, yeah, went all the way up my leg, and I mean all the way up my leg, and then made me turn around and go all the way up my leg again. He's like, you're good. And I said, you're good, too. <laughs> oh, oh, that usually only happens to me. Oh, it's terrible. First time. Really? Yeah. And that's why the TSA is terrible. Yes. So did we determine what the red dot was? I, I don't know. I don't know if it was a bullseye. Uh, I don't know if that was just his way of because I didn't actually see the red dot. The lady in front, uh, she cleared the machine before I could turn around to fully see the red dot. Whole thing could have been a scam. And now I own a timeshare in Boca. Why can't they put you back in the machine and see if the red dot appears? I don't know. But I was told by someone who works at TSA. That's a friend of mine that these machines, I guess they're newer and they're totally making these false reads on you could be raining outside it could uh confuse the machine body scars can confuse the machine oh well that must have been it well it was the groin area that's all i can tell you so we're going to vegas by the way i it would really help the ratings if we would just say groin one more time <laughs> groin area we're going to vegas and vegas now has self screening lanes The TSA, the Transportation Safety Administration, in order to make your life just a little bit easier. By the way, it's the Transportation Security Administration. Um, uh, They they, uh, have a self-screening system. They're not using it in other cities. And they call it, how do we step into the future? This is a step. The interface with people makes all the difference. (laughs) No, this is taking away the interface yes. with, 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 with people. It's for TSA pre-check customers only using the English language. It's a screen with a do-it-yourself instruction uh, that tells you how to smoothly pass yourself and your carry-on luggage through pre-flight screening with little or no help from uniformed TSA officers. For the first time ever, I want to do TSA pre-check because I want as little interaction with TSA officers as humanly possible. And when I say as little interaction, I believe we should fire all the TSA officers. And where can everyone get in touch with you who works at the TSA? Oh, well, at, at, at the airport next week. <laughs> You'll be able to get into all the touch with me you like. Oh, all the red dots are yeah. going to be all over your body. You'll be able to go full fingers uh, at the TSA checkpoint there. 
from the Indianapolis airport. I just love how, once again, uh, a government agency is way behind the times. Here you have grocery stores, retail outlets going away from self-checkout. And like, this is when the government says, this is a good time to jump in on the trend. Everybody's going away from this. Although I agree with you, I would much prefer this. Walking right? up to a screen and doing the whole George Jetson thing on the iPad and then passing right through. Although the whole uh, TSA pre-check bothers me to no end. The idea of paying for your rights drives me nuts. I was in Israel for a week. Coming out of Israel, the Ben Gurion Airport, the security checks from El Al, the airline I took, are incredible. I never went through one of those machines. I went through a metal detector like a normal person. That's it. Did you have to take your laptop out? Did you have to take your shoes off? No. Wait, did I take my shoes off? Yes. I take that back. I took my shoes off to go through the metal detector. I did take my laptop out. You are right about that. But nobody, I didn't have to stand there and put my hands up like I'm a freaking criminal. There was no pat down. But what, not even with the back of the hand? There, there was no back of the hand. There was no front of, of, of the hand. Nothing, zero. Wow. It, it, it was incredible. I'll, I'll, I'll describe the whole thing. Uh, we have to admit that TSA doesn't work. Security is valuable. Security is important. TSA doesn't work. The idea that we're now removing that human element. I think you, you're, you make a funny point about being behind the times. I think it's making an argument that they know that their interactions have failed. They know. You think they care about that, though? I think that it might be harder and harder to hire people. That's fair. And therefore, uh, they have to make changes. And certainly, uh, I'm assuming that TSA has a lower approval rating than Congress. <laughs> this, this, this would be my... I, I would assume uh, that, that uh, food poisoning has, does higher than the TSA. You Gen Zers are just really old people. It's not me saying it. It's it's chiropractors. It's Eat, Drink, Smoke. I'm Tony Katz. That is Fingers Malloy. Gen Z and millennials are turning into old hunchback people, according to a chiropractor. That's the kind of headline that gets clicks. <laughs> it used to be Britney Spears nude. And then all Britney Spears does is show up nude. So now it's about how Gen Z and millennials are turning into old hunchback people. By the way, Britney Spears, hunchback. <laughs> so I, I, I assume this is from all the video gaming, all the time in front of a, a, a computer, all the time looking at your, at, at, at your iPhone and no one ever thinking, hey, maybe I should, I should like sit up straight just once in my life. I think listen there's no speculation that's exactly what it is it's hunching over with your hands together 12 hours of the day looking at your phone that's what's causing this there are times where if i'm looking at my phone it doesn't happen all the time the pain in it's not the neck it's where like in, in between is that the trapezius muscle sure right you sound like gordon Soley right now it, oh Nice. That's a Georgia championship wrestling throwback, people. <laughs> Tomorrow on the show, Tommy Wildfire Rich. <laughs> oh, Ole Anderson just died, too. Uh, yeah. You're right. That's that. That is uh, our people, people. That's our youth right there for fingers and me. <laughs> um, but it, it, it's it's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. And so it it when it first started happening, like, what is going on? And then I realized it's me looking at the phone. And I'm like, maybe I don't have to look at the phone that much. <laughs> there really isn't anything to see. Social media, as we know, is a cesspool. And lately, I am getting the cesspooliest of the cesspool. The most awful, dirty, awful human beings have found me and said, you, I want to take out my angst on you. They found out you put ketchup on a hot dog. Oh, yes, I did. And I'll do it again. Uh, it's 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 been terrible. Follow me on X at Tony Katz. <laughs> Instagram Tony Katz. Instagram is still fine. I don't know. What Instagram just avoided the insanity. I feel like if you've been on social media for a while, uh, X. It's formally not, it, by known. the way, it's not funny when you say that. I know you love it. It's terrible. I don't care if 
other people think it's funny or not. I enjoy it. And that's all that matters to me. Uh, X, formerly Twitter, was really fun around 2010, 2011. And I feel like that vibe moved over to Instagram, where Instagram is kind of fun, where X is just the worst. It, it, it's it's better now that people can speak and they're not being shadow banned. Yes. But the anger, the hatred, the vitriol, and it does take a while to understand that none of it is real. And lately, like I, I, I know that, and I went for a while of not doing anything on, on Twitter. And every now and then I'd do something and fingers would text me. I thought you were off Twitter. <laughs> it's like, you stink. <laughs> but then Elon Musk took it and you people got to speak again. I'm like, all right, I'm going to be supportive of that concept, even if I don't agree with Elon and everything. I'm going to be supportive of, of, of that idea. And lately it's like, this, this none of this is real. Every single hit that I take, and you guys got to understand. I, uh, you know, I do other other radio. Fingers has his radio show in Michigan. I do a morning show, a daily morning show in Indianapolis. I do a syndicated midday show uh, uh, that that's heard in in spots across uh, the country. Just added KRMG in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where Eat Drink Smoke is heard. So love you, Tulsa. Got to come for a visit. And I'm Jewish, and I just did a trip to Israel, and I'm I've been talking about Israel. Oh my gosh, the stuff coming my way. The, there is I, there's a part of me that's that says there's no way these people believe these things although people can believe different things than i do but the 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 violence in the words if we could use that phrase the absolute hatred the unwillingness to recognize just the basic facts of october 7th the hamas terrorist attack and everything that has come the basic facts of israeli history forget all of that you should die in a fire, Tony. It's crazy. But these people aren't real. I mean, they 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 want to use these platforms to amplify this this horror. And if and if I give them that opportunity, that, that, that's on me. Delete, block, gone. And, and you know what? Less time. I have a wife. I have kids. I have fingers, Malloy. I'm busy. Truer words have never been spoken, but I have to ask you this question. So we knew that there there's anti-Semitism in, in the United States. Sure. Do you think, I feel like COVID has brought out the worst in a lot of people to where uh, many people are just running on raw emotion and, and anger. And it brings out hatred in them in ways that they, they were locked up. And now they just feel free to just share whatever ugly thought is in their head to whoever they can share it. Okay, with. I, I will give you I will give you a a, a theory here. Uh, we'll we'll have to talk about the hunchback Gen X Gen Zers another time. The Gen Xers standing up tall. Um, COVID did not make anti semites, right? I didn't, right. I didn't, I didn't say that. I understand. I understand. Just just for the sake of clarity, what I think is going on, and we may have discussed this before. Our issue in America is not, you know, we often talk about mental illness, mental, it's an anxiety issue. News, culture, um, COVID, everybody is anxious at every moment. When we talk about the TSA and the real issues there, it's people are already anxious getting on a plane and TSA does not make it easier and the airlines are not making it easier and the anxiety uh, it gets to a boiling point, and that's why you're seeing all the insanity on airlines. It is an anxiety issue. No one is trying to bring that down. Guys, everything's going to be okay. Just take a breath. Not everything is the end of the world. If, if, if you are at a store and someone isn't wearing a mask, you're not going to die. There is this TikTok video going, going around where this woman is like, I, I had to stop being friends with somebody because they, they're no longer masking. And I, I called them. I said, how could, how could you, with everything that's happening, not be masking? It's just so dangerous. I have to live my life as a healthy person with a mask on? That, that is, that's, a, that's an obscene thought in my, in, in my world. But you're so absolutely ramped up that you think everything you're breathing in is going to destroy you at every second. That how dare other people not be as anxious as you, so therefore you can't be friendly with them, you can't enjoy them, you can't know them. This is the issue. This is a massive part of, of the issue, the anxiety. 
And and if you ask it, and I know you know this because you have been one of the first people to say this out loud, fingers. Social media is, of course, added to that multifold because it allows people to act out on that anxiety without repercussion so they get reinforcement that this response is accurate. Yeah. And it drives people to have positions that they may not have had 15 years ago, when, especially when we're talking about censorship. When you get on a social media platform and so many of us uh, in society today want to be in our own little bubble and not exposed to things that are outside of our bubble, uh, never would have thought 15, 20 years ago that there would be people out there saying, well, these thoughts should be censored. I shouldn't be uh, subjected to seeing them. Well, now what social media has done, it's been able to get people to form their own bubble, be inside their own bubble, but also condemn people outside the bubble to the point where it's changed their view on censorship, where they think it's okay for views outside of their beliefs to be censored. It's a very strange phenomenon. When you see law schools having certain speakers or and, and you see the law students say, well, we shouldn't have that speaker because they defended so-and-so. These are law students who think that some people shouldn't get a defense in the United States. That's nuts. It's terrifying is what it is. But it is to exactly your point. They've, they've so in insulated themselves that they think that their emotional state should be everybody's default state. And no, no, I'm not living in, in that crazy. So yeah, off the phone, off the social media, stand up straight and, uh, and, and your back won't hurt and you won't be a, a Britney Spears naked hunchback. Making the complex simple. Brought it full circle. This is Eat, Drink, Smoke. Try new things and get excited by it. So when uh, this uh, came right by our table, the old Route 8 from Augusta Distillery, we were like, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll try that. It's Eat, Drink, Smoke. I'm Tony Katz, and that right there is America's favorite amateur drinker, Fingers Malloy, Augusta Distillery. That is Kentucky, people. And, and this is a bourbon that, according to their website, is only available in Kentucky and Ohio. But we came across it in Indiana. So either it is Bootleg Fingers Malloy. That or was it, my, my nickname in college. Is that right? Yes, Bootleg Fingers Malloy. Or it has grown in its uh, distribution. This bourbon right here, this uh, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey aged eight years, it has different barrels, and different barrels come in at different proof. This one that we have comes in at a glorious 131 proof. Fingers Malloy. Always applause when something is over 100 proof. So, so what? Read off the off the label there. What what barrel number is it? So it was, first, it was, it was over there on the right. On the thing on the right. First of all. 131.7 proof. My apologies. Bottle number 115, barrel 25. So that's what we're trying, which would say to me, everything's a little bit different. Some of them I've seen in the 120s, some of them in, in seem to be possibly a little bit less. 131.7 fingers. Yes. I'm so excited. My God. How desperate are you to grow hair on your chest? <laughs> Someday it'll happen. Someday. Today. Today. Prepubescent fingers, Malloy, is that day. Sir, may I have some of this bourbon, sir? It is much paler than I thought it would be. Um, it's, it's a honey. Not amber. Not any red hues. Not any copper. Hue, maybe a slight copper. You Maybe. It's paler than I thought it would be, Fingers Malloy. You? Yeah, actually, I am getting a little bit of copper, but I've got it right against the window. Yeah. So we the... do have some beautiful natural light in here. We've got the Glen Cairn glass. Well, you know, it's got the foot, and then it bows out, comes back in. You can really get your nose in it, swirl it around. It does seem to have viscosity, right? It is sticking uh, to, the, to the side of the glass. And a nose that has maybe, maybe a hint of ethanol. Maybe. It's unbelievable. Either that or that's. That's the rye spice punching you in the face. Oh, that's a good call. That's a good call on, on the rye right there. 
That is a nice call. Um, oh, it's it, it's it's sweet. I I like the idea of, of of the spice. Maybe it's a spice in general. Maybe it is a a a, a rye spice. Uh, that that that's that's going on. Um, a lot of traditional bourbon notes, right? I mean, you're getting vanilla, caramel, oak. You know, the mash bill that I I we were trying to figure out what the what the mash bill is on 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 this, and it seems to just from everything I've seen, a, a higher corn kind kind of input, which would generally lend to a sweeter uh, type of bourbon. That nose is easy. That nose is easy and a little bit. It's a, it's a, it's a, oh, there's almost a, an herbal. I'm not saying that in a bad way. I can see that almost an herbal, but honestly, uh, sniffing bourbon, uh, which by the way, is our new website, <laughs> sniffing bourbon, dot net i thought you were gonna say it was a great country song (laughs) that would honestly sniffing bourbon would be a great country song (laughs) that's gold right there next to tennessee whiskey oh there you go sniffing bourbon (laughs) but forget the sniff and let's do the drink and fingers below you ready for this tony i've been ready for this all day we will take the first sip known as the kentucky chew move it around the palate really get a feel for what's going on, sometimes you want to take two sips. The first one to set the taste buds. The second one to really get the flavors. Fingers, are, are, are you breathing out because it's hot? Okay, first of all, yeah, that hits you on the tongue. And uh, there's a, a nice bit of sting on the tongue. Uh, gentle warmth going down. Something that I didn't expect. Chicken nugget. Uh, holy, it's like you read my mind. <laughs> Cherry. An instant punch of cherry hit me. A little bit of cinnamon, and then you go back to the vanilla and the oak, uh, and uh, that that's that rye spice is there too. There's a lot of nice things going on here. This is the Old Root Eight Single Barrel Unfiltered Cast Strength from Augusta Distillery. Eight years, 131.7 proof fingers. And you said a gentle warmth. Yes, a gentle warmth in the chest and a nice bit of sting on the tongue that's still kind of there. I'm going in, fingers. He's going in. I'm going in. He's going in, ladies and gentlemen. He's doing what we like to call the Saginaw Swish. And he's, he's, he's still swishing and maybe tearing up a little. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, he, he got up and walked away. He's he's almost on all fours right now. Ha! Oh my god, smooth. <laughs> oh, that's very good. Oh. <laughs> uh okay, 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 okay. That is ha, I've never seen this reaction from you before. That is cinnamon hot. That is that is a, a bit fruity. Um, it's all in the tongue. It's all in the cheek. I didn't feel anything center chest. Maybe because it just burned out everything. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Holy cow. Is that admittedly it hit me like a ton of bricks. It hit with an insane heat. I literally, I've never in the four years we've been doing the show. I've never left the table and we've done things that are over 130 proof before. Oh, oh my gosh. That is, that is delicious. That finish is so outrageously uh, creamy, caramelly. Um, The cinnamon lingers, but it's, it's, it's not, it's not harsh. It's, it's like a cinnamon, it's like a cinnamon cream. Um, Oh my goodness gracious. It's, it's, that's stunning. It's funny because I got cherry and that, that rye spice. And maybe we're kind of talking about the same thing, but it's hitting us different. I said fruity, so it, it, it's just that the cinnamon's so over overwhelmed. It just so hit me. I went first. I'm going to put this on a cube. Well, that's going to happen. Um, that's really good. Even with that reaction, guys. Oh, the I finish wish. is still. I you, wish, wait, you wish you had a camera. I wish we had video of that whole thing. It was marvelous. Uh, this uh, the old root eight single barrel 
cast strength from Augusta Distillery coming at 131.7 proof. That's, that was really nice. I mean, don't get me wrong, the hit, but that finish is, that finish is delicious. I, I know we're only in March, but when we start thinking about putting a list together of uh, the best of the year, that could be on a list. That could be on the list. The question is, Fingers Malloy, is it in your liquor cabinet? We will get to price in just a little bit. Find everything we have going on at eatdrinksmokeshow.com and the videos that we do have. And, oh, more videos coming. The studio is so close to being done. I can taste it. Hopefully it tastes like this. Eat, drink, smoke. It is your cigar, bourbon, foodie, extravaganza. I'm Tony Katz. That is Fingers Malloy. Find it all. Everything we do at eatdrinksmokeshow.com. And if you don't already have the podcast, find it wherever it is you get your podcast. Whatever platform you like, that's the platform we like too. Eat, drink, smoke, get the podcast. We are drinking the Old Route 8 single barrel cast strength from Augusta Distillery, the Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, eight years, 131.7 proof, Fingers Malloy. Gets applause, anything over 100 proof, getting applause from Fingers Malloy. Uh, I am prepared to bring this to a cube. Are you? I don't wanna. Why not? Because I really like it neat. But I listen, we'll do what we always do on the show. You're going to put it on the big rock. I'm going to put a couple of drops of cool water in mine and see how it changes. Remember, water experience. brings down proof. That's what it does. The only thing you can actually add to bourbon in the barrel. To bring down the proof, you can't add anything else. Otherwise, it's not bourbon. Water will also change complexity, right? It can bring out spice. It can subdue uh, other flavors or vice versa. It's really fascinating, but there it goes. Uh, My 131.7 a proof bourbon there, Old Route 8 from Augusta Distillery. It hit me like a ton of bricks with that cinnamon and that heat, but that finish was absolutely delicious delicious inspired that's how good i i thought it, it it was fingers i just wish we would have had the video for the full tony cat's reaction to uh, this experience with this bourbon but i put a couple of drops of cool water in mine and uh i'm really going to hope that it didn't monkey with it too much there you go he's going in with a little bit of water kind of open up the bourbon it hit me like a ton of bricks with that cinnamon and that heat i actually had to get up from the table because of it, I've never done that in my four years of this show. Fingers, a little bit of water. Oh, it makes you happy. Look at you. I'm a big enough man to admit when I'm wrong. I was wrong. A couple of drops of cool water brought out more vanilla. Right. Uh, that spice is still there. Uh, that cinnamon you're talking about is there, but it also brought out a, a, a creaminess that wasn't there for me before, maybe because it was overwhelmed by that spice. Uh, but you also very said good. you got cherry. Yeah, I got it hit me cherry right away. That's something. Um, not so much this time around. I got much more vanilla. Uh, and that that like I said, the the water brought out a creaminess to it that uh is very interesting. It's it's wonderful. It's very good. You would ask me about did I get oak from it? I got to admit, I got hit so hard that I, I I can't tell. Let's see what happens on the cube. I'm going in fingers. I'm going in the old root eight. 131.7 different barrels will give you different proofs. They do a whole bunch of different versions of this. I'm going in. He's help. going in, ladies and gentlemen, to my health, and he's doing what we like to call the Louisville oh, lift. Daddy. Oh, oh, Boo Bear. I think I think he likes it. Oh, Schmoopy. Schmoopy. Schmoopy muffins. It's Damn, you, you look good. like the first time I tried cinnamon toast crunch. Damn, that's good. Yeah, okay, so there's a little bit of heat back of the throat right now. Um, it just it just took away the power of that of that first hit right there. Ooh, I feel it actually sliding down the throat. The heat is is just is I, I might spontaneously combust. Man, that's some that is some heat. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, this is the delayed um, reaction. Yeah, that is something. That is something. Um, it's it's a bit luscious. I think that 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 caramel is there. That cinnamon got reduced, but the rye spice mm -hmm. has picked up, and that's what I'm feeling in the back of the throat. That's sensational. 
Holy cow. And I get, I, I get that it sounds like I'm in an exorbitant amount of pain. I understand. I like drinking this bourbon. I should have a safe word. I get that that's exactly <laughs> what it sounds like. But man, oh man, that's, that is really, really wonderful fingers. I, I just feel like if we're starting our list early this year for the best bourbon of 2024, this is on the list. This Maybe number on one. I, it's it's outstanding, right? Because I can appreciate that that something's happening here that that I don't I don't normally do. How big this thing is. The question is, fingers Malloy, is it in your liquor cabinet for one hundred and fifteen dollars a bottle? Yes. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. And you know me. Yeah, I totally know you. This is way above what I normally like to spend on a bottle of bourbon, but it's worth it. It is like I, 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 without question, I would give it this. Now, the uh, different barrels are going to give different proofs and you might get a little bit of different flavor uh, uh, out of it. So as, as fingers would say, try it in your local lounge if it's available. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This this is in. This is in. That is a that is a wonderful, wonderful flavor. And I got to admit, going back and thinking about it neat. Now thinking about it in the cube, I think that once I allow myself to really decipher the finish, that oak is there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the element tying it together that's that's really giving me the most the, the most happiness. Neat, it was this that that finish was a like a creamy cinnamon, like it, I, I was I was gonna say cinnamon milkshake, but that's that that's that's too uh creamy. Um but it, 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 with 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 the with the cube, with the cube, it's just a lovely balance, and there is a little bit of fruit that that exists there. I am, I am thrilled by this. Yeah, this this was nice to discover. The old Route Eight single barrel cask strength bourbon. It's time, fingers Malloy, for news of the week. Well, we've been talking a lot about pizza this episode, Tony. Uh, well, you may not want to applaud when I share with you this story out of New York. If you ruin pizza, I will hurt you. I'm not going to ruin pizza. New York City government may ruin pizza. Oh. New York City. Has, By the way, you can put anything with New York City government's going to ruin, and it, and it will. Well, and I know some people who are listening are saying, why are you talking about a story out of New York City? Well, a lot of times this is a trial balloon. <laughs> what happens in New York City may at one point come to your community. Right. Uh, New York City has quietly approved a controversial green plan to require pizzerias and matzah bakeries using decades old wood and coal fired stoves to cut their smoky pollutants by 75 percent. Yeah. Listen to me very carefully. Matzah is made a certain way. Matzah, of course, is Passover. You're talking about the exodus from Egypt. There was not enough time to allow the bread to rise, so they 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 took it off the hot rock as quickly as possible, and it turns out they made crackers, and they said, this will have to do. Did you bring a schmear? Who had time to bring schmear? Your one job was to bring a schmear. That was the actual conversation that the Jews had in the desert. Do we have a translator? I don't understand half of that conversation. Um, you don't you don't mess with tradition. I don't care what the rules are. Don't care about the environment. Matza gets made the way matza gets made. And if these people in New York don't like it, go to hell in a handbasket. Well, which, by the way, I've been told is not the way to say go to hell. Something goes to hell in a handbasket. You don't tell people to go to hell in a handbasket. But I do. Well, matza stays. Well, you're going to have to tell the Department of Environmental Protection in New York. Happy to. You got a phone number? Their fresh edict takes effect April 27th with some city businesses having already coughed up more than $600,000 for new smoke eating systems in anticipation of this expected mandate. What's what's the department I have to call? Department of uh, Department of Schmucks and Losers? Yes, Department of Environmental Protection in New York City. Is there a phone number? 1-800-SUCK-IT? I think you just... Uh, I got nothing. Yeah, it's they, the they government. Stink. It would be a one nine hundred number. Yeah, they would charge you exactly. But uh, I, I want to know. I didn't realize uh, cities had a Department of Environmental Protection. Well, any city that wants to prove how how much it cares, they're gonna ru they're gonna ruin pizza, Tony. Right. 
China and India are throwing out pollutants like it's its job. But the problem is the Manashevitz family that wants you to have a lovely Passover. The Chinese, we can't even talk about how many coal-fired pizza ovens they're building in their country. And no matzah, you know this. No one ever imports Chinese matzah. I have made my point. Guy Kakam Afamyan. It takes a big man to admit when he was wrong. Or is wrong. Or is kind of wrong. Uh, I think I'm a big man. It's Eat Drink Smoke. I'm Fingers Malloy. He's Tony Katz. Find everything we do over at our website, eatdrinksmokeshow.com. Now, Tony and I have had uh, a friendly argument over the years about getting on an airplane and how you should dress appropriately on an airplane. Tony, of course, dresses how? I'm in a suit. Tony I flew to Israel, Fingers Malloy. Ask. Go on. You were in a suit for the flight. Ten and a half hours from JFK to Tel Aviv. Twelve hours from Tel Aviv to JFK. Suit. And I look good. I bet you were incredibly comfortable. I gloriously. Thank you. My butt fell asleep. It was weird. (laughs) It was super, super, super weird. Well, I have argued, while I, I do agree with Tony, that some people, when they get on a plane, it's absolutely ridiculous what they're wearing. Uh, you know, a, a, a tank top and uh, a thong is probably not appropriate for an airplane. Uh, but I have I travel all the time in a T-shirt and casual pants. No, they're not casual pants. Uh, joggers. No. And sometimes say if we're traveling during the summer months here in Indianapolis and we're flying to the desert, I will wear a pair of shorts. Yes, you will. And flip flops. Once or twice, I've been known to wear flip-flops on a plane. I don't even know why I talk to you. You disgust me. They're called slides. The kids call them slides. Oh, is what God, they call we them. are going to riot. But I had a miserable flying experience coming home from Florida where I thought to myself halfway through the flight, I, he may be right about something. And it's the shorts. I was in southwest Florida. Had a wonderful vacation. Four days, uh, went to uh, a Harley dealership down there, and I went to a couple of cigar shops. I went to a cigar factory down in southwest Florida, and I had uh, a wonderful time, and I'm going to post some video over uh, on Instagram. Where What's the Instagram account, Tony? Uh, that would be Eat, Drink, Smoke Podcast. Eat, Drink, Smoke Podcast. That's where you find us on Instagram. And so, Be sure to like and follow, and I don't know what else you do over there. Smash the like button, as the kids say. Oh, smash it like <laughs> it's your job. So I hopped on a, a flight from uh, southwest Florida back to home here in Indianapolis, and I was wearing shorts because it was 85 degrees. And uh, the guy next to me was wearing shorts. I don't want to hear the rest of the story. Please stop now. Was this a big guy? Uh, we were neither one of us. Were, our nicknames wouldn't be tiny unless uh, people were being ironic. So here's the situation. I'm on this airplane, which, by the way, uh, they are making these seats smaller. Can we all agree? Right. I, I know you are Tony first class cats and you fly first class all the time. Vast majority of the time. I'm one of the regular folks out there that will fly coach. I am not liking where this story is going, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to need an adult. So I sit down, and I'm very happy at first because they're about ready to close uh, the doors of the plane, and it's a full flight. Nobody's sitting next to me in my room. Yes. The golden hour. Yeah. Absolutely thrilled. But then all of a sudden, two people... (laughs) On the plane, and they're do 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 and uh, they walk back to my row, and this gentleman sits in the middle next to me, and his I'm guessing wife sits at the window, and it's me and this guy for three and a half hours uh, on this airplane, and uh, he's wearing shorts, I'm wearing shorts, doing everything I can to pull my leg over. He's doing everything he can, but over the course of three hours, uh, you're sitting there in shorts, and you're realizing. Uh, and you, I mean me, I'm feeling leg hair that's not mine. I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. I will never, ever, ever. I'm not going to wear a suit. That's not happening. But the, the days of traveling in shorts on an airplane for Fingers Tiberius Malloy are over. So in this instance, 
You're absolutely right, Tony. I, I want to say two things, fingers, at Light this hair. moment of joyous gloating. Um, uh, first, uh, that story skews me out in a way I cannot, I cannot describe. Uh, and secondly, you know, it's said that the only way we actually truly learn is through pain. <laughs> and I am glad that you have learned. I'm sorry you didn't learn earlier and teach yourself this most valuable lesson, but I am so glad that you could not escape the forces of not doing enough core exercises that you couldn't keep your legs to a certain position in a certain area. And that it was only a matter of time before you made a new friend. We're going to, uh, we actually have a retirement home that we bought down you in the Boca. TSA guy and yes. you and this guy. Yeah. To sum up red dot, TSA bad experience. Uh, uh, in the first hour, we talked about getting frisked with the back of his hand, and then on the way back to Indianapolis, intertwined leg hair. So I do have a question, and this is going to be outrageously sexist of me. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with it. Why didn't she sit in the middle seat? I have no idea. I don't know. And maybe Was she smaller? No. Oh. Oh, never mind, then. <laughs> no. It all is self-explanatory. <laughs> Uh no, she was not, and he was he was just tall. He wasn't, uh, you know. Some may describe me as a little bit portly. Is that right? Yeah, I, but I am also six three. So on top of uh, you know, the fact that we they cram us really close together in the three seats, I'm six three. My knees are touching the seat in front of me. Uh, these planes are just getting ridiculously small. Right, you're not getting larger. Well, my legs haven't gotten any longer in the last twenty five years, but hairier. Um, uh, the, 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 the whole travel experience and we, as we've discussed many times, uh, in, in, in the crapper, but I'm just really glad this happened to you. Oh, thank you. And, and sometimes Sweet. bad things have to happen to good people uh -huh. in order for them to, to learn to be, uh, to be better. So, you know what? Thanks for sharing. Thank you for admitting that I was correct the entire time. And, um, now uh, find yourself a uh, shirt that buttons down. And uh, by the way, That's button down refers to the collar, mm -hmm. right? If you're not, if your collar does not button down, the shirt is referred to as a button up. Well, first of all, I will compromise. I will wear a t-shirt with a dicky. Ah. Uh, having said that, though, I again will argue I am not going to get all dolled up to get on what is basically a Walmart with wings. It's not happening. But I will wear. It isn't about the plane. It's about you. Which part of strange man leg hair do you not understand? It's about you. I'm going to have khaki between me and strange man leg hair. The from next Lund. guy is going to be wearing a tank top. And he has a weird thing with the deodorant he uses and then not taking a shower the next day. And it's going to be these streaks of white and these little like dangling deodorant balls. And one of them is going to end up in your whiskey sour. And you want me to ruin a good shirt with someone's old spice cake all over my sleeve? Better it should be the shirt that you can dispose of. Than a than 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 a a connection with some part you never want to be a part of that you will never be able to escape. It will haunt your dreams. No, I'm already over the leg hair thing. No, you're not. <laughs> See, that's what you say. It actually pains me more that I'm having to say you were right, Tony, than the actual awful experience on the airplane. Let me just say now before we go. Sweet dreams. <laughs> Sweet dreams. The Old Root 8 single barrel cast strength bourbon. That's what we are drinking. $115 a bottle. And it's we're both saying yes to the liquor cabinet. Yes. We're both saying yes to the liquor cabinet. Man, that's a lot of cinnamon, a lot of rye spice. That's a lot of good. And from Luciano Cigars, the underrated. Um, I got to tell you, the 6.5 by 54, it's a nice, easy smoke. It has not, that spice has subsided. It has not changed too much in the profile, but for $8.50 on the MSRP, it's, it's solid. It is solid 
and I'll take solid from Luciano any day of the week. Find everything we do at EatDrinkSmokeShow.com. This is Eat, Drink, Smoke. Follow Eat, Drink, Smoke on social media, on Twitter, at Go Eat, Drink, Smoke, on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Eat, Drink, Smoke, and Instagram, at Eat, Drink, Smoke Podcast.